Hi there, so welcome to, uh, this is going to be a new series of little, just short-ish videos, um, just kind of quick tips and tricks and stuff that I've picked up and stuff that I do uh, to make life a little bit easier using uh, this wonderful piece of software called Ableton Live. So this first one we're going to look at um, multi-warping. Um, again, this is something you might already know about. If you already know about it, then don't watch the video. Simple as that. <laughs> but if you don't, then this is quite useful. Um, <clears throat> so this is something that I use because I use, if you see my other videos, you'll know I use quite a lot of hardware. Um, and this um, that I've got up on screen now is a, a, a new song I'm just sort of working on. What I've basically done is I've just recorded about eight minutes, just under eight minutes of the TB03, uh, a sequence on the mini log that came in there a bit further on. There's some stuff on the Volker bass and there's some stuff on the System 1. Um, just to sort of get a basic, if you like, kind of guide sort of um, bit of the song there. Um, because the reason I've left these as they are, particularly the TBO3, that the, the sound that is going to evolve over time because I'm using the, uh, just turning the dials as I've recorded it and just changing the cutoff and the resonance and uh, and so on. Um, hold on, let me just change my output then. We might just be able to hear something. Okay, let's just boost the volume up a little bit. Okay, so as that plays through... Okay, it's going to change over time. So that's kind of like my, my guide um, bit of the TB03. What I then do with the stuff that I know is going to repeat all the way through, which is generally going to be the drums, I don't record like eight minutes of it. I'll just record a, a few bars because these are recorded from the TR8. So I was just purely using the audio for this. This track was going to be all all uh, external hardware. So I've done kind of eight bars of kick, eight bars of the rim pattern, eight bars of the snare. Um, we've got some closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat with two different sounds. I've got a kind of the first half is kind of a tight open sort of a tightish open then that's more open um and then i've got the clap which is also off the tr8 and then i've recorded some stuff there's like a reverse cymbal sound off the electribe uh and like a white noise kind of sound off the electribe as well now the point behind this is just a, a kind of quick and simple easy way to get all of these lined up both with each other and on the grid Okay, now I've got pretty good latency levels. All right, I've got a pretty powerful laptop and I'm using the MX1 as my sound card. Um, so, just to adjust that a little bit, my overall latency is around about nothing. All right, um, I'm actually on 512 samples. I could probably get away with, if I just change that, probably to, if I take it down to 128, I can probably manage it, but I'll do it at 256 samples. Okay, at that, we'll see the latency is going to change here in a second. Hopefully, have I done the right bit of hardware? Uh, no, I haven't. You numpty. That one. Then it'll change. Right, okay, so you can see it's zipped down to like 6.5 milliseconds, which from a performance point of view and playing stuff and triggering live, you're not going to notice. Now, over an eight-minute song, when we've recorded stuff it might start to drift away from the metronome and the grid. Um, so, obviously, at the moment, everything is in time with each other because all of this was pretty much recorded at the same time, all right, apart from these bits which are recorded separately, but the latency is going to be basically the same on each bit. Now, the latency is very, very minor. If we zoom right in on here, okay, this is where the kick drum starts. So you can see we've got, like, a couple of milliseconds here. Let's say, for a... A shortish song, you're not going to notice that. Over eight minutes, that's going to start to drift off. And if you put a metronome against that, you'll hear it drifting off towards the end. So we want this to start here. Now, I could go through every single one and just tighten up the timing. But it starts to get a little bit more confusing when stuff doesn't start on beat one. Because you've got to work out, you know, where beat one would be and then change it and so on. For the kick, it's dead easy. Because all I would need to do is put a marker there, right click and set one, one, one there. And it's going to do it. Which, you, like I say, you can do on the others. You can go through each track separately, which is very time-consuming, particularly if you've got a lot of tracks. And also, it can be a little bit confusing, like I say, if you've not got a sound that starts on beat one. So, to get over that problem, we can use multi-warping. And basically, we can tighten the timing up on everything in one go. And then everything will stay in relationship to where it was before. But it will be lined up exactly on the grid, because Ableton will warp it, um, and so on. 
So the best way to do it is to use something like a kick drum that's going to have a good, strong transient on that first beat. So I'm going to use the kick drum for this. Now, if I highlight all of my tracks, it's going to come up here and say 12 audio clips with different lengths are selected in 12 tracks. If your tracks are of differing length, you can't use multi-warping mode, okay? They need to be all the same length. There's a couple of things that we need to do. First thing I'm going to do is just to tidy these up because I only want these to be eight bars. So I'm going to just get those. So these are all finishing at the end of bar eight because I'm going to copy all of these across to the end of the recording I made. Um, and I'm going to make the open high hat because I did eight bars of each. This one I'm going to make so that finishes on 16. Sorry, it finishes so 16 bars, I should say. So that finishes there. Right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate all of these. Okay, just to the end of the recording I did. So just highlighting them, Control D. Just keep pressing Control D to go all the way along. And that's going to give me these drum parts for the whole thing. I'm going to have to tidy up the endings of these in a second. Do the same thing with these. Um, and I'll do the other one separately because that's a bit longer. I'll miss that one. Damn it. I'll go back and get him in a minute. Let's do you. And I'll do the 16 bar one separately. Because it won't need as many presses. Ah, too many. Come back. Right. And then this one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All the way across. Okay. Right. Now let's just I'm gonna tighten all these up, right? So everything finishes at the same time. Right, okay, so they're all now the same length. Now if I click on them all again, okay. We've still got the same problem down here. It's now saying 237 audio clips with different lengths are selected. And you're probably thinking, well, hang on, they're not different lengths. Well, they are because as far as the hard drive and the background stuff going off in Ableton is concerned, they are still different lengths because if you remember when you, if you copy length, if you uh, drag um, clips that way or that way or whatever, it's, it's non-destructive. It doesn't actually affect the original recording on the hard drive. So as far as Ableton is concerned, these are all still different lengths. So what we now need to do is we're going to right click and we're going to consolidate all of those. Okay, so that will then basically make them all that that exact same length. So all of these separate files will all be put into one, which you'll see in a second. Now this is going to take a while. Um, so I'm going to pause the video for a second because uh, you don't want to watch this going up to 100% because you'll be bored out your head. Um, and then we'll come back and I'll, I'll do the multi-warping in a second. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, we're back. So Ableton has done its consolidating thing uh, and we now have all of these tracks of the same length. Uh, it's up to you how much of that you want to do, um, depending on what you've recorded. What I would generally do with this then from the arrangement point of view is that kind of gives me it's like seven minutes of, of all the elements of the song all playing all the way through. Um, what I would generally then do is I'd grab all of these, okay, just to kind of give you a quick example. Uh, I'd stick them all right over here and then I'd start bringing elements in. So let's say I want to start with the kick drum, uh, I'd bring the kick in and then obviously I'd chop bits out of this as I go through and then I might want to bring that in, you know, there or whatever and then i'd start to arrange my song that way so but this video is not about song arranging it's about multi-warping right so we've taken the kick up to the top just for ease of me doing it this way now i'm going to need to zoom in quite a bit on this just so you can see what's happening all right if i just zoom in on the kick now right if i play it early on with the metronome right just from the start okay yeah okay it sounds okay it's in there now if you go further on Okay, it is out, right? It's not spot on. If I zoom right in, you can actually see, right? It's this far out, right? By the time we're at six minutes in, it's that far out, okay? Now, if I wasn't adding anything else to this, that's not particularly a problem because all of these things have all been recorded at the same time. So they're all going to be slightly out together, right? So as long as you're not doing anything to a click, that's fine. But 
for a track like this, I might want to add some loops or some stuff from VSTs within Ableton. And they, when you put those in, they're obviously going to be spot on in time with the grid. And it's going to sound like a bit of a car crash by the time we get six odd minutes in. So simple solution. We use multi-warping. I'm just going to zoom in just so you can see how these move. Uh, so this is the TB track and this is this one. Obviously, these are all going to move at the same time. Right, so Control or Command and then A is going to select everything. And now if we now look down at the bottom, we are now in multi-warping mode. We, you know you're in multi-warping mode, you've got to look for these stripy lines here. Okay, now if you remember before, we had that message in here saying we had clips of a different length uh, selected and you can't do multi-warping that way. So remember, you've got to get them all the same length and you've got to consolidate them so it actually um, changes the original files to for all the same length. So I want this to start on beat one. Now I can't do start one, one, one here because it, it doesn't work that way. It won't change all the others. All I've got to do though is it's it's put a marker in there for me, okay, where that first transient is. I trust Ableton to do that. That's pretty close. Now watch what happens up here. If I drag this marker, okay, watch what happens with the TB1, right? You can see they're both moving at the same time, right? So they're staying exactly locked in to their original position with each other. So all I'm going to do for this kick drum is bring it right back to the start. Okay, so it starts right at the beginning. And if I now zoom in right to the end, okay, we can see there's the beat one look. We can see it's exactly spot on. It's going to be bang on with the metronome. Okay, and everything else that's playing will also be bang on with the metronome. Playing. All the volumes are out a little bit, but so you're not going to hear much because I've not boosted the volumes on much of these, right? But everything else we've got close tie hat down here. Let's just have a look at that. Let's just boost it up a little bit. But again, before warping it, that would have been a little bit out of time. You can see now it's exactly spot on on the beat, on the grid, and they've all done that at the same time. Okay, so it's a great time saving thing. Uh, if you are recording a lot of audio, don't need to do it, obviously, if you're just working purely within, within Ableton. But if you're recording external equipment, however good your sound card is and your latency settings, you're going to get a little bit of a delay. And if we're doing long tracks, that is going to start to drift out over time. Like I said before, it doesn't matter particularly if you're not putting um, other stuff with it. If you're just purely doing all the hardware, it's fine because everything's in relationship to each other. But if you want to put loops and other stuff um, within Ableton, within it, then you would need to just tighten all that timing up. Um, and it's going to work with, you know, if you're recording a, a live drummer as well, it's going to work that way. You may need to go in a little bit more and uh, tidy up some of the timing if the drummer's a little bit out of time. But that multi-warping mode with everything moving together at the same time is a great way of doing that. Hopefully that's of some assistance uh, to you. I found that, that really useful on my recordings when I'm, I'm recording a lot of external audio. So that was uh, Ableton Live quick tip number one. So this is the first one in this series. I will keep adding to this playlist uh, with other little quick tips as I uh, come across them. And I think it's something that you might want to uh, learn about. So thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video.